So hey there fellow YouTubers, it's Frank Bush here again. So in this video I'd like to show you guys a little survival tool I think is quite handy when you're out in the wilderness, uh, emergency preparedness, that kind of thing. So these items here are mini solar evacuated tubes. So the purpose of these really comes in a nice aluminum case that has foam padding and that kind of thing, but I'll just set that down. But the purpose of these really is to set them out in sunlight and to cook food. So the internal temperature of these will start to increase almost immediately. I can already feel my finger getting warm, but uh, the purpose of them really is you pour in water into these or put in food items that, into these that you want to uh, cook and you simply just set them out in the sun. Really simple items. Like I say, it comes in this aluminum protective case. It's really well made, good quality items. They sell them on eBay. I'll put links down below to access these and purchase them uh, in the description of the video. But uh, I'm just gonna simply take one of these now. I should stop and show you in detail. So they hold one fluid cup. Hopefully the camera's picking that up all right. So the thinking really are, it's a double glass walled um, tube that has kind of a black surface on the inside of the vacuum. There's a vacuum tube or vacuum in between the two layers of glass and the heat on the inside gets trapped by the vacuum so it can't escape. So the temperatures can rise in these up to, I think it's about a maximum of about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So easily enough to boil water. I've found from my experience that when using these, um, if I fill them up with ice cold river water or pond water, if you will, and I let them sit out in the sun for about an hour and a half, that they'll uh, come to a boil. And within about an hour and a half, maybe two hours time, depending on how intense the sun is. But definitely good items to have in a survival kit. So I'll just um, turn around and simply set this up as I normally would. I'll just use this here as an example. I've got a cup here where I've got some water. I'll just fill it up to its capacity. And it's got a little silicone seal that kind of keeps, traps the heat in on the top. And you just, like I say, set them out into the sun. So the water I put in was cold. It was uh, cold water out of my tap. But uh, I'll come back after a bit of time has passed. I'll just make sure that this is all kind of sets out facing. I'll come back after a bit of time has passed and uh, make myself a hot coffee with it. So and I'll just give you a quick close up here of this item. Like I say, there's no moving parts or anything else. Of so just kind of sits into the sun and does its thing you you know obviously want to have it angled a bit of this so that it can maximize how much sun exposure ideally i'd like to add in some reflective surface on this um, foam padding that they have in in a protective foam padding but as you can see really simple item comes in a nice little aluminum case it's made by the north american solar solutions company they produce this you know for in canadian dollars because that's where i'm at of uh, it's about uh, 20 25 dollars so you know they're not expensive items but when it comes to you know having these in a kit they can definitely help offset your fuel needs sorry i just got a piece of grass on there and like i say they don't hold huge volumes it's only holding one cup but if you were to dry out some vegetables or you wanted to cook some meat or pasteurize some water to make it safe to drink, you know, these are great items to have in an emergency scenario. And for the cost of them, it's easy enough to own, you know, more than one. Now, I myself own quite a few of these. I like the idea of being able to just use them en masse, if you will, of I could turn around and put out five or six of these in the morning, go off into the field, do whatever I want to do. Then when I come back, I've got ample amounts of water that I can have for the day kind of thing. So they're good in that regard. But like I say, there's not much to watch when it comes to the next hour and a half or so. Right now it's about 11.45 at the location I'm at. So I'll come back, uh, you know, 12.45 and just take a peek on it. And then I'll come back probably about 1.15. And uh, if it's up to temperature, I'll just make my coffee. And if it needs a bit more time, it'll be closer to 145. But either way, they're one of these things where, like I say, I could turn around and easily put a thermometer in the little air hole in the top and get an accurate temperature. I just don't have one of the little thermometers with me, but I know from the feel of it of, you know, is this thing hot enough? If it's hot enough that I could barely drink it as a coffee, I know it's hot enough to pasteurize the water. You know, that's 
So I just kind of take it to the elementary perspective in that regard. But like I say, one way or the other, these things are great for if you're in locations where uh, fuel supplies for like, you know, firewood and those types of things are fairly sparse. You might find that a tool like this could be ideal for helping you um, pasteurize water and cook food and that kind of stuff to make it safe for consumption. These really are great for emergency preparedness items. And the entire weight of it is maybe a half pound a pound. I mean, it's, it's a bit bulky because of the protective case um, that it comes in but I'm okay with that for what it offers me so like I say I'll cut back later on in the video and so I'll try to make this a fairly short video but I'll cut back later on and kind of when it gets to the point of being ready and show you that it makes a hot coffee okay so it's 12 45 now it's been about an hour so one of the cool things about these things is it's cool to the touch so if I can hold it in my hand I'm not getting burned or anything else but I'll just pop off the lid now see how warm it is I'm starting to see bubbles on the inside and it's it's warm like a hot bath it's not quite to the point of you know that I would safely see it as pasteurized but uh, there's definitely some bubbles in there there's some temperature has definitely risen it's it's like dishwater but not quite enough to scald you I, uh, to give you a good bearing but uh, the clouds have moved in a bit but either way one of the other good things about these is because they're vacuum tubes, even if there is a bit of cloud and that kind of stuff, the heat normally stays trapped in these for long periods of time. So it's one of those things where you kind of set it and forget it. You just throw this out in the morning or in the, you know, closer to lunch or whatever. Then you come back hours later and, and it'll just be there. Even if the sun was only out for a few hours and you know that it was hitting it, when you come back later on, even if the sun isn't directly shining on it, normally the temperature within them will stay high for extended periods of time. Uh, they'll stay hot for hours on end because none of the heat is able to escape out through the vacuum you know the vacuum chamber if you will it really the only area that the heat can escape out of is the little holes on the top you know and this uh this flexible silicone material does a pretty good job at keeping the heat trapped in so like i say it's not quite hot enough at this point where um, it's going to make a coffee for me it's more just kind of warm warmish hot water so i'll come back in about another half hour we'll up see on 115 out. now so it's been out here for about 90 minutes like I say, still cool to the touch. Don't have a problem with it. Yeah, it's starting to get hot now to even keep my finger in there. I can't keep my finger in there for extended periods of time. But uh, realistically, this could still use... It hasn't been the most intense Sunday. Um, but uh, realistically, this could probably use another half hour or so. So i've just got my coffee cup here that i'm using to help angle it to the ideal 45 if you will at my location but whatever your latitude is you want to kind of angle the container to the same angle as your latitude so i'm at the 49th parallel if you will so i try to keep it at about 49 degrees you know 45 if you will in reason and uh, to maximize the amount of uh, sun exposure. And like I said earlier in the video, if I ended up putting a reflective material on the back here, it would greatly accelerate the amount of time that this take to come up to temperature. But like I say, because it wasn't the most ideal day, it's sunny, but it's not really an intense sun. Um, I could easily give this another half hour. But when I'm out in the field using these types of things, I don't necessarily just sit back and say oh at exactly an hour and a half i'm going to come get this thing if i show up after tromping around in the woods for a while you know two three hours later i just know that it's there and ready to go you know it's not one of those things that i normally would sit back and you know every 15 minutes check and check the temperature and all that kind of stuff it's more of i generally use it when i'm out in the field and say yeah i know i'll have a coffee in three or four hours from now and i'll just come back and grab it but uh one way or the other this thing's almost ready like i say i'll give it another few more minutes to just kind of maximize the temperature given that it's not ideal conditions and then i'll uh, whip off a coffee and call it a video but as you can see this little thing is easy to use it's simple like i say the only one thing that i wish they did was put in the reflective materials and in a future video i might even look at developing some sort of little construct that'll help ideally amp up the speed in which this thing works but it's simple 
you know it's one of those things of you can use it it's effective the way it is you can increase the performance greatly by putting reflectors in behind it and that kind of thing but uh, i'll save that all for future videos so i'll cut it here i'll come back in 15 20 minutes or so let's see yeah it's 1 16 now so i'll come back in say 20 minutes half an hour or so and uh, make myself off a coffee and i'll just have it then all right fellow youtubers so it's been about another 15 minutes or so but uh I just want my coffee at this point in time. So I'll just pop the lid here and see if I can show you of, yeah, ow, yeah, that's hot. Of, let me just set this down. I'll see if I can get the camera angle in there. You can see all the bubbles along the sides of it. You can definitely tell that it's come up to temperature. So, and like I say, I'll just pour it in uh, my coffee cup. And people have watched previous videos know my combination of hot chocolates, um, instant coffee, sugar and coffee whitener. So that's just that simple. Like I say, doesn't make a huge cup of coffee, but uh, when I use these in combination, well, like I say, I've got, I think I've got 10 or 12 of them. And uh, I can easily do off two liters of water at a go, if you will. They're not something that I would bring all 10 of them with me. Yeah, that's warm. Uh, yeah, I'll have to let that cool for a minute, but it does make an excellent cup of coffee. And like I say, it's one of those things where it's very good when it's out in the bush. And if you don't want to burn fires and waste fuel and that kind of stuff all the time, something like this is definitely a viable option. So I'll just let that sit because there's, like I say, let's see if I can show the inside without any liquids in it no kind of reflective looking material almost looks like copper on the inside that's the stuff that'll get hot of but there's a bit of droplet still on the inside of the container so i'll just let that sit for a minute and kind of get hot enough to let those evaporate then i'll see that is good enough to just throw back into the kit and use again in some other time but uh definitely a good technology to have like I say, ideally, if I was going to rely on these heavily, I use them as just more kind of an accent item when I'm out camping and that kind of stuff. But if I was going to use these heavily and wanted to rely on them on a consistent basis, I would definitely want to have um, reflectors like Mylar reflectors and that kind of thing in behind it just to ensure that uh, they got as much performance as they possibly could in a shorter period of time. You know, it could be invaluable adding in a little Mylar roll of reflection that uh sat into this kit with it but uh i don't normally rely on them for pasteurizing and that kind of stuff i'll just have one or two of these with me when i'm out in the fields and set them up to make myself a hot coffee when i want to take a break off camera and that type of stuff so you know i don't necessarily use them for critical situations but if you were these types of things are definitely invaluable to have um you know these items are cheap for what they offer you can see I don't know, hopefully the camera's catching that, but as the water droplets that are in on the walls there, you can see they're already almost totally evaporated off now. But, uh, but it's one of those things of, these can be handy to kind of offset some of your fuel consumption when you're out in the field. If you're at a base camp and you know you're going to be there for a few days, you know, having uh, two or three of these thrown into the back of the vehicle that you just dragged along with you, can be really handy for making yourself coffees and stuff without having to stop and do boil ups and all that kind of stuff. But uh, if you enjoy this type of content, please like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Cheers.